night, I was watching a video from Patrick Bet David or Valuetainment that shows the three types of salespeople in an organization, all right? Firstly, you have the finder, then you have the closer and the developer. The finder is the person or salesperson that goes and finds new leads, right? Is good with people, is able to build new relationships, find new contacts, right? Then the closer essentially is the negotiations, right? They close the deals, get them across the line, all right? And the last person is the developer, and that person is there to build the culture in a sales organization, right? Build the rules, the standard as well. And out of those three, who do you think would be the most important, right? Most people would actually say the closer because they are the ones who in the sales movies get you know the deal across the line or arguably could even say the developer because they are there to set the standard and the culture. But the most important is actually the finder because they are always exposing any sales organization to a new market or new business, right? Which brings me to this video, which is mastering the art of point of sale referrals or the four steps to getting point of sale referrals. Now, before we get into this video, make sure if you do get any value out of this video, if this helps you in any way possible, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with everybody in your sales room or sales office. I can guarantee you it's gonna make a difference, okay? Now, let's get into the video, all right? Now, I'm currently the sales manager at Good Life at Queen Street, okay? And like point of sale referrals is the way, or the way that I get the most sales. That is like my way, right? And one, one example of how this actually worked really effectively for me, right, was last month, and for the purpose of like, you know, the personal information, let's say that this, le this girl's name was Jessica. Jessica worked downstairs, right, at a retail store right next to our gym. She had come up inquiring about different membership options, and her main reason for wanting to come into the gym was because she was tired of being underestimated and seen as small and fragile, and wanted a PT that was really going to push her. In fact, she didn't even say she wanted a PT, but she wanted to feel pushed. She wanted to feel like she was getting pushed to a limit, right? That was the problem that I had to solve for her, right? Based off that single interaction with her, and over the span of 15 days, I was able to turn that into seven sales, okay? Because she gave me 10 referrals, and out of those 10, two people were new members of our gym. And out of those two people, they each actually gave me, one gave me 10 referrals, the other gave me five, and both of them generated two more sales for me, all right? And including her signing up as well. So seven sales out of 25 referrals. Okay, now when you look at that, that is totally achievable. If you do that just four times over the span of 15 days, that's 28 new members for your gym, right? Now imagine if you do that eight times in a month, that same process, you rinse and repeat, that's 56 new joiners, all right? 56 new joiners for your gym, okay? now. That right there is through obviously following the process of all the four steps to getting positive. Now, before you even get into that, the number one thing that you have to do is you have to solve their problem. If you don't solve their problem, like literally, you can kiss all of this goodbye. There's no real point in doing it. And the real reason why is because you're trying to get point of sale referrals to convert them into new members. That's the whole purpose, it's not for no reason, all right? Now, once you get that out of the way and you're clear on solving their problem, the first step is pre-framing. Now, how do you actually pre-frame them to give you point of sales of, of referrals without actually saying it, right? It's based off of the affirmation that they're telling you throughout the onboarding process. So when they're telling you that they're lacking motivation or accountability or technique, right? What they're actually telling you is those are opportunities to then give them a reason to give you referrals. So for example, most members are getting started with friends or family to increase their level of motivation, right? Now, all members get started with two personal training sessions. What most members are doing are actually getting started with a friend or a family member and getting in those two PT sessions together, right? Extra accountability also increases their accountability and they can both get some more support, you know, um, and, and technique, right? But out of the, like the many that I've actually listed here, the number one most important that I found the most effective is actually community because people feel comfortable in that environment and when they feel comfortable, all they wanna do is feel good. When you enter a gym, you just want to feel good and when you do, you're more inclined to bring more people into that environment so they can experience the same feeling that you're experiencing, okay? So that essentially is how you focus on pre-framing them to give you referrals without actually saying it, right? After that is then the presentation, right? 
Now with the presentation, what most membership consultants do is literally just get a piece of like a book or a piece of paper, right? That just has a referral sheet, put in the first name, last name, best contact number, here's a sheet, just whip your phone out, fill it out, all right? And just get me 10 if you like. Sweet, cool, chuck it and that's it, <laughs> okay? now. That right there, if you want it to work 10 to 20% of the time, go ahead and keep doing it. But if you want to work 50, 60, 70% of the time like to get a result, right, then what you have to do is you have to make sure that you value add, not discount, okay? And how do you do that? Number one, solve their problem. We've already talked about this. Making sure that you solve the one problem that they, or the actual solution, and you give them that solution that they're looking for when they first step into the gym, okay? The second thing is to give them a welcome pack, right? Give them a welcome pack with local business discounts, right? Make them feel special. I always like to write, give them a note with a little handwritten um, note, right? Based off of something that we spoke about, whether it be on the phone or on the gym floor. I always like to do that with them and then add that with extra local business discounts because now they feel special. They're getting more than what most members actually get because they're getting started with you, right? And thirdly is you have to put effort into the presentation. Like, you have to put effort into it, right? What most membership consultants forget is that the prospect knows that you work in sales. They know that if they sign up with you, you're gonna get commission out of it. They know it, so be honest, tell them, right? My business is not based off of just getting new members, right? It's based off of getting people and their family, their support crew, their work colleagues started in the best way possible, okay? And because I'm so passionate about that, what most members are doing are actually giving me 40 potential new members, right? 10 potential new members, whatever that number is for you, right? That's what they're doing because this is my mission, right? Can you help me fulfill that mission today, right? They're more inclined to help you because you put effort into that presentation, you value added, not discounted, okay? After that, you then pre-qualify those leads. It's very simple. Find out where they work. Ask them what type of training they want to do. Go through the needs analysis with them before you even get to that person, right? That's going to increase the likelihood of you being able to actually convert them, right? Find out when's the best time to contact them. That is like, you know, you want to get in that habit. So it makes it easier for you when you have that first point of contact. And then lastly, if you follow all those steps right, the last step is this, recruiting. And it goes back to the start, right? If you follow these steps, they are actually going to become a closer for you. They're going to be handling objections for you. They're going to be doing the hard work for you. By the time they get to you or the, the referral who's been referred has actually gotten in contact with you, they're coming to you with a problem and all you need to do is help them find the solution, right? And that right there is how you roll, like you just make that chain go all month long. Okay, if you got any value out of this video, if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share this with everyone in your sales room. Even just one thing, if there's one thing that you learned from it, drop a comment down below and let me know if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to help out. Otherwise, I will see you in next Monday's video. I don't take nothing.